In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform unsupervised image classification in ArcGIS Pro. Unsupervised image classification in remote sensing uses clustering algorithms to group similar pixels in an image without using any prior training data. This approach is called unsupervised because the algorithm doesn't rely on labeled data to learn how to classify different types of land cover or features in the image. Let's get started with an example using Landsat imagery. In our example, I have ArcGIS Pro open with a clipped Landsat scene of the Hoosier National Forest in southern Indiana. My imagery is simply red, green, and blue, so a three-band raster image. To access the image classification tools, you have to click on the Imagery tab. From here, you can click the Classification Wizard button. This will open the right pane with the image classification inputs. The first input is the classification method, so in our case, we'll use the unsupervised technique. Next for classification type, you have two options, pixel-based and object-based. In my opinion, if you're working with really sharp imagery like 1 meter resolution, then object-based image classification is the best option. But because we're using 30 meter resolution Landsat imagery which is relatively coarse, I'm going to use pixel-based. Finally, the last option is the classification schema. If you have already captured training samples, there's an option for you to use your samples. Or maybe you already have an existing classified raster. You can use this as a classification schema. But what I'm going to use is just the default schema, which is the National Land Cover Dataset Schema. Okay, this all looks good. Let's click Next. Now we have even more inputs. For the classifier type, the only option is ISO cluster. The most important input here is the number of bands. The documentation for ArcGIS Pro recommends that this value should be 10 times larger than the number of layers in the input raster bands. So in our case, we have a 3-band raster. Let's go with the value 30. But this doesn't mean that our output raster will have 30 unique classes, because we can combine some of these clusters together. Next, I have the maximum number of iterations, which is how many times the clustering process will run. Because I've already increased the number of classes, it would only make sense for me to increase this sample interval. It might take a bit more processing power and time, but I'll pick a value of 50. Next, we have the maximum number of clusters per iteration, maximum merge distance, minimum samples per cluster, and skip factor. I think the biggest one to pay attention to here is the minimum samples per cluster. If you increase this value, it can ensure that you have a certain number of pixels for each cluster. Let's say you have a clipped scene even smaller than the one I'm working with. A high number might limit the number of classes created. I am going to be honest with you. This is all trial and error without any perfect settings. The defaults might work fine for you. I suggest previewing different settings and checking what fits best for your input raster. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's see how generating clusters with these settings will look. Let's click the Run button and examine the clusters in the next section of this video. So far we've generated our clusters as you can see on the map. To be honest, this looks like a bit of a mess to start with. 30 classes seems a bit too many, but it doesn't look like it generated that many classes in the output raster. At least we have the variation in clusters, and this might help us distinguish between specific classes. So now, we're going to get into the most time-consuming part of unsupervised image classification, and that is assigning classes for each individual cluster. For me, I like to classify clusters thematically by using different colors. For example, let me just zoom into this big water body here. Let's just select it on the map to find the class value. So now, let's change this class to blue in the symbology for our water class. Okay, so far that looks pretty good. Now let's zoom into this urban area. This definitely looks like an urban area, so I'll change it to the color red. Let's do the same for the roads. I'm going to change that color to red as well. Now, I'm going to change some of the forest classes. I'll change this cluster to a dark green color. So I'm going to go through each one of these clusters until I have a class for each one. Don't be surprised if some of these classes are not perfect. I've done a lot of land cover classification, 
and I've never seen a perfect unsupervised classification that is 100% correct. You're always going to have misclassification somewhere. So just do the best you can. I'll classify the rest off screen and see you back in a bit. As you can see, I've assigned all my clusters to classes. Now it's time to create a final land cover classification data set. So the best way to do this is by reclassifying your raster into a final land cover data set. Let's go to the Analysis tab at the top here and select the Tools button. This will open the Geo Processing pane on the right-hand side. Now, type in Reclassify and hit the Enter button. What we're going to do is change the values to match the land cover data set. For example, I know grassland clusters are 0, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 15, and 17. So let's change all these values to 1. For water, I know that they are clusters 2 and 6. So for each class, I am going to reclassify my raster clusters into a final land cover data set. Again, I am going to go off screen to do this. I'll see you again in just a couple of seconds. Alright, so here's my final land cover data set after running the reclassifying tool. I've also assigned names for each class, instead of just giving them number values. But it's really common to just have number values if you take a look at some of the other land cover products that are available. Anyways, am I happy with this land cover that I generated? To be honest, not really. I can see some issues that it's misclassified some of the water in certain spots. I can also see that some of the roads are grassland when they should be urban. You can try tweaking your parameters a bit if you want, but I wouldn't have too high expectations using unsupervised image classification. It's really limited to how far you can take it. You would be better off using some of the object-based classification techniques that are available in Trimble E Cognition Developer. We also missed out on the opportunity to use some of the other bands like Near Infrared and Shortwave Infrared, but that was beyond the scope of this video as I just wanted to show you the steps for completing an unsupervised classification. Anyways. Unsupervised image classification can be useful in situations where there is no or very limited labeled training data available. In this video, I use the ISO cluster technique to generate groups of pixels. From there, I manually classified each cluster and reclassified them into a final land cover data set. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more great videos. I'll see you next time.